أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نويت الأربعين نويت الاعتكاف نويت الخلوة نويت العزلة نويت الرياضة نويت السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد today inshallah tonight dear brother and sister we will continue explaining surah al-kahf as much as we can and Sheikh Mahmoud Sahib will recite from verse 55 to verse 60 inshallah and we try to finish to explain as much as we can from these five verses A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Wa ma mana'an nasa an yu'minu if jaa'ahumul huda wa yastaghfiru rabbahum illa an ta'tiyahum sun الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وَإِن تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى فَلَنْ يَهْتَدُوا إِذًا أَبَدًا وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ بَلْ لَهُمْ مَوْعِدٌ لَنْ يَجِدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ مَوْئِلًا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العظيم وبلغ رسوله الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين الشاكرين بقلب سليم الحمد لله that Allah سبحانه وتعالى made us Muslims and created us Muslims and tonight we are trying, inshallah, to continue of the explanation of Surah Al-Kahf. And it is said that who meditate and who try to contemplate on Quranic verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open <coughs> more and more to understand so we are seeking our Lord blessings for understanding more his holy Quran so the verse 55 said وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَى وَيَسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ الْعَذَابُ قُولًا In the translation it says And what is there to keep back men from believing Now that guidance has come to them Nor from praying for forgiveness from their Lord but that they wait for the ways of the ancients to overtake them or the wrath be brought to them face to face.
ومن منع الناس أن يؤمنوا what has stopped people to believe huh? what prevented people to believe وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى okay you say I didn't get guidance how to believe when Allah sent to you guidance Allah is questioning you now why then you didn't believe if there was a, no messenger Huda what is Huda here Huda is guidance what they translated and what is there to keep back men from believing now that guidance has come to them what prevented people not to believe when the guidance come and you mean it ja'ahum al huda al huda is not only guidance is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam al rahma al muhdad his name the mercy that has been <coughs> offered to people. Allah offered you a gift. That gift is to guide you. So in explanation of Quran, in the real meaning of many, many scholars, <coughs> they don't go with the as it is in English translated only from believing now when the guidance has come. Which guidance? Guidance carry ocean of meanings. <laughs> and what majority of scholars say the guidance is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Holy Quran. Huh? <laughs> came to you from Allah light is Muhammad scholar said that Noor mentioned in that verse wa kitabun munir holy Quran so the guidance mentioned in this verse is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and holy Quran so what prevented you now you have no excuse to come and say oh we cannot believe why you are not believing you I have sent a guidance to you وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَى No excuse, finish. You cannot be mushrik. Say, I am worshipping stars. I am worshipping fire. I am worshipping son of God. Guidance gained to you. Now it is in your court, the world. You will take it, take it. You don't want to take it, it's up to you. وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَى أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَى Nothing to prevent them from believing when guidance comes to them. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّهُمْ And to ask forgiveness. When Huda guidance come, you will find yourself that you have made a lot of sin. مشرك when Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Ahl Makkah, to people of Makkah, they were mushrik. Allah is telling them, Ya Ahla Makkah, Ya people of Makkah. That verse came in Makkah people. Quraysh. Why you are mushrik still? When I send my messenger to you, when I send my holy Quran to you, you have to for ask forgiveness. Illa an ta'tiyahum sunnatul awwalina. إِلَّا أَنْ تَعْتِيَهُمْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ You are You are not going To ask Forgiveness until punishment come on you سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ What سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ What usually happens To the earlier nations That came before Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم When these nations do not believe Allah said Punishment from heavens On them destroy everything you want that? You do not go. You are not going to believe until that will come. I said Muhammad as mercy. I am not doing it anymore because for sake of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
You don't want to believe this, up to you. Yeah. That what came in the meaning of the verse, and we can understand out of this verse a very important message to Muslims, to believers. That is for unbelievers. But believers must take a, a, a symbol from there, a sign. وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ الْهُدَى Means, O mu'min, who you put your feet in Islam and you did not perfect your iman, be careful. I sent to you guidance. I sent to you that tajalli, that mercy from heaven to lift you up through iman billah, iman billah wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa bil yawmil akhir. To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in angels, in his books, in the last days, in his prophets, not only to go and do your prayers, do your fasting, and cheat and deceive, but to fix yourself from inside. And you have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when that guidance came through your hearts. And that's why it is said that the guidance for believer, for mu'min, for Muslims, they believed in Allah, they believed in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they believed in Holy Quran, but they need the key. And that key is istighfar. By istighfar, you can open the key to the guidance that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu <laughs> came with. The, why? He said in the ayah, وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ هُوَ الْهُدَى وَيَسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّهُ That istighfar will clear that prevention from reaching the guidance. Because when we are deeply involved in dunya and forgetting akhirah, and we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but many people do not practice anything. That is not going to benefit you from shaitan running after you except by asking forgiveness and repentance. When you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be guided. How to repent? You have to find a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your repentance. And that way is, When they be oppressor to themselves, they come to you, Ya Muhammad, they ask forgiveness. Means your forgiveness must pass through the door of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order that you will be guided and not you will be punished means you are going to receive the separation. You are going always to be away from the divine presence because punishment for believers is to be away from the love of their Lord, from the love of Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam. That is the punishment for women. For women, what kind of pain he will suffer when he is away from his lover. And his lover is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His lover is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His lover, his lover is Islam. His lover is Quran. His lover is a sheikh. When he is away from that, he is suffering. That suffer as, it is as strong as unbelievers, they suffered when Allah threw them with punishment from heavens. Means, don't let yourself to suffer <coughs> from being away from the guidance that Allah has sent to us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to lift you up to spiritual levels 
that you will attain Mahabbatullah, Mahabbatul Habib, Mahabbatul Mashaykh, Hudurullah, Hudurul Habib, Hudurul Mashaykh, Fana'un Fillah, Fana'un Fil Habib, Fana'un Fil Mashaykh. Do not lose these three levels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered them to you by following your ego, your nafs, being away and separated from your lover, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Sayyidina Muhammad, who is Holy Quran, who is Islam, who is your Shaykh. أو يأتيهم العذاب كبلا. or else they are going to see all kind of punishment for unbelievers if they are not going to follow the guidance. For believers, Allah is not going to send punishment because they are believers. But they are going. عذاب كبلا means punishment comes. Facing them. For believers, what is the difficult punishment facing going to be the believer when Muhammad وسلم, in judgment day turn his face from him? When our face come in the face of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and Sayyidina Muhammad turn his face. That is punishment. That is biggest punishment. How you expect that you know the only way to paradise is Shafa'atul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The intercession of Prophet. To get into paradise. If you reach that place and you want Prophet to hug you, huh? when you see a child, what you do? Everyone say, hug, hug, hug. Kiss, kiss, hand, kiss. If, if that person who you, the child is running to hug him, turn his face, what will happen? We are children. To Prophet, we are children. So when he come and want him to hug him and he turned his, his face what will happen that is azab that is punishment means you will be left alone in the judgment day means don't turn your face in dunya from muhammad then he will turn his face from you in means keep the love of sayyidina muhammad or else you will be left behind. Then, verse 56, وَمَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ وَيُجَادِلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ لِيُدْحِدُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِهِ وَمَا أُنْذِرُوا هُزْوَةً Allah is saying in this verse, we only send the messengers to give glad tidings and to give warnings. But the unbelievers <laughs> dispute with vain argument in order therewith to weaken the truth and they treat my signs and warning as a jest why Allah is sending messengers we send them to give glad tidings or warnings he said, Wama nursilu mursaleen. Who are the mursaleen? Who are the mursaleen? The prophets. Who are the mursaleen? Prophets. Ah, messengers. He's sending them for glad tidings or warnings. Means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked. Picked whom he wanted made them prophets and made them on top of prophets some of them messengers also because there are prophets and there are prophets and messengers together in uh, two two huh? combined. combined not all prophets are messengers but all messengers are prophets so allah said he said wa we do not send messengers except to give glad tidings and warnings. So Allah is picking up, He picked up perfect them and send them.
to give what? Glad tidings. And warning. Other than messengers, no one can give glad tidings or warnings. You cannot give glad tidings or warning. I cannot give glad tidings or warning. You cannot give. Allah is He specified them. He said, "Wama nursirul mursalim." We do not send messengers except to give. You cannot because you are not picked up. You are not a prophet. You are not a messenger. <coughs> Means don't judge other people. It's not your decision. It's not your right. You cannot tell to people, you are good, you are bad. Only messengers. And messengers, Allah did not give them also the right to say, this is, these are good and these are bad. Judgment is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, we are sending them only to give either good tidings or warning. Finish, period. Who believes, believes. Who doesn't believe, it's up to him. It's not up to us to judge other people. Who oh, believers, don't judge people. Only Allah will judge. Even Mursaleen, Allah gave them to only to give the message. Either good tidings, glad tidings, or warning. Wa He is giving nothing. He is negation. I'm not sending Mursaleen except for giving glad tidings and warning. We cannot find that Mursaleen judged anyone. Allah didn't want them to judge anyone. When Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, which is coming later, was proud of his knowledge, Allah made him to go with Khadr alayhi salam, to learn from him, to tell him, you don't have enough knowledge. I have some people specialize them, different other knowledge. You have a knowledge, the other one has another knowledge. So don't be proud of yourself. Allah judges. Not us going and judging people from right to left. This is good, this is bad. We have to leave it to Allah. Especially those who are following Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, following the traditional Islam, mainstream Islam, Ahl Tasawwuf. That you have to keep in mind that you cannot go and judge this one or that one. وَيُجَادِلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ لِيُضْحِدُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ And those who are unbelievers, they begin to dispute and argue, as we explained last time, before, uh, before, uh, before four or five verses, uh, that only people are, only they are argumentative, they are, are argumentative, and they do not care anything. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا He was, uh, but man is in most things contentious, arg arg argumentative. In everything. He argue, and we explained, even he argue, why this verse here, not here. There are some scholars, they say, why this verse here, not here? They argue. There is nothing. Why are you arguing? If you argue, you are not going to come to a, to a, you, to a uh, result. <laughs> result, leave it. Keep your heart clean, pure. Directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what needed. So what he say? They argue with vain argument in order there was to weaken the truth. And today, even believers, even in the Muslim, between the Muslims, they are the most argumentative people. Look, in the past history, in the Islamic history, you can find 
more than 300 different school of thought. You know that? Not four school of thought. That four school of thought, that's what all the consensus of scholars agreed on. But beside the four school of thought, there are more than 300 school of thought. And all of them, they're fighting with each other, arguing with each other. Muhammad Abu Zahra from Egypt, he's a big, uh, he is a big uh, scholar of Azhar. He put a book about Tariq al-Mazahib, the history of Mazahib. And he classified around 300 different school of thought. And all of them, they were fighting with each other, argumenting with each other. Everyone make the other kafir. Yeah. It's a book of six, 700 pages. That needs to be translated to show how much Muslims are, are arguing for something that is in Allah's knowledge. To argue about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended on the throne, stiwa Allahi ala al-arsh, and people don't know how to make wudu ablution. You will find them in the conditions of ablution, they make mistakes, they are going to argue you how Allah descended or overtake the throne. That's Allah saying, don't argue. Al-Jidal yutfi nur al-Qalb. Aw nur al-Iman. Argument will destroy or ex extinguish the light of the heart. And unbelievers, Muslims believers, they don't argue their prophets and that's why they are believers, but they argue each other. And that's bad. But unbelievers, they argue their prophets. And the verse came for the unbelievers that whatever messenger they tell them, their prophets tell them, they still argue. And they say, no, it's not true. Show us. Show us what you are promising us. And when they, that promise come, they are finished. Finish what you can do at that, where, where you can regret or what you can do. And they took my verses of Quran that I revealed to my messengers, Huzwa, as a jest. And seriously. They didn't care for it. And they become to mock from what I have asked my messenger to warn them about. Warning them. That they, they, they do not believe. They are mocking, mocking, mocking from them. As now Muslims, that's for unbelievers. For us, you say to someone, pray. Ah, oh, there is time when I go to Hajj. I will cover my head. I put a ha ha uh, hat. No, no need. Let me be like that. <laughs> nice hair. He spent his money on fixing his hair. They go now to barber shop. They put hundred dollar to to massage and do their haircut. What you call that? Groom. What? Groom their hair. Groom their hair. <laughs> and women uh, paint their hair. <laughs> and now Muslims are painting their beard even. <laughs> and in Islam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah is to make your, to make henna, to make uh, beard uh, uh, diet with a special kind of henna, which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended and said it is preferable the reddish one. Now you find people of 80 years or 70 years with small beard here in their, what you call this? Chick. Chick. They make chin, they make goatee beard. Did you see Prophet make goatee beard? All the ahadith say that Prophet has a beard of Kabda. 
He never had a goatee beard. That is shaitan beard. <laughs> <laughs> why, why goatee beard? For what? Here. Why? They are, they are, what, what's that mean? We didn't see it in Holy Quran. Never. Or in Hadith. In Hadith, Prophet ﷺ has a qabda. Now they are putting it here. That's not Islamic. Islamic must be all. And must be, uh, what you say, dyed with reddish color. Hen. Yeah. Now they are, and Prophet ﷺ did not, uh, was saying no for black. They are dyeing it with black color. Why? To make their ages less young, young and to marry more. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> they want to cheat on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah make it for you white. You don't want to make it reddish as Prophet asked, then leave it white. Why? He didn't allow, Prophet didn't accept anyone to make it black. That's not accepted. This is un-Islamic. It's forbidden. Not allowed. They make it small, goatee, you got it goatee, goatee, and they dye it black, and they go knocking doors to marry. That's it. <laughs> they are changing. That's, that's here what we are saying, mocking. What, what it say, They are mocking from my verses of Quran. What I have revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Muhammad revealed to them, وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِذْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْرٍ يُوحَىٰ means his hadith, what? When Prophet opened his mouth, it is wahi in anything. وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ He doesn't say anything from his desires. It must be revealed. So when he opened his mouth, it's a revelation. And that revelation, never Prophet said, make it goatee. That's, they are mocking from Allah verses. No, either don't make it and say I'm not carrying it and it is sunnah. Better than to make it here and to destroy the image of Islam by making and making everyone do it here on the goti, on, the, on your chin, chin, chin and dye it black. Why Allah make you white at last of your age and why Prophet Sallallahu said uh, painted reddish because no one when all of us in that area in that region everyone his beard was black so when it becomes white to show that you cannot go back to your youth so make it reddish never mind <laughs> But don't cheat and make it black as if you are another time young. And why they are make it black? It is, a, it is well known to look young. I'm surprised to see 85 years of age people or 90 years of age people or 70 years of age people still painting it black. We know that you are old already. <laughs> Why are you are painting it next? <laughs> they are taking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus Huzwa. And they treat my signs and warning as a jest. When Sayyidina Umar had in his beard white hair, he said he hired someone in his time to to remi remind him of death. When that, when Sayyidina Amal in his beard had a white hair, he dismissed that man who was warning him about death. And that man came, Ya, ya, ya Amal, what happened? Why you dismiss He said, I don't need you anymore. Said, Why you don't need me? I, I didn't do anything wrong. He said, no. Allah has sent me someone who will remind me better than you. He said, oh, he said, white hair in my beard. Allah sending the white in their beard and in their hair 
which in our beard, in our hair, to remind us of this. That you are going to go to the grave. Don't try to make yourself young. You, are, you cannot live your life and other people's life. It's your life, finish. If you make it red, you make it black, you make it white, you make it green, you make it yellow, you make it orange, you are going to die. You cannot run from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your way, don't take his verses, huzwa. Don't uh, mock from his verses. Don't mock from his signs and warning. Warning is there. <coughs> ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يده. And who does more wrong than one who is reminded of the signs of his Lord, but turns away from them, forgetting the deeds which his hands have sent forth. ونسي ما قدمت يده. ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها. When someone comes and reminds you of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses, you, <coughs> as if you are not hearing it, like putting your earplug, don't want to hear. فَعَرَضَ وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ He said, مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ أَظْلَمُ means who oppressed, who, who took the highest way of showing uh, enmity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ How they said it here. And who does more wrong than one who is reminded of the sign of his Lord. Not only more wrong, he is the worst. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ لا يغفر لمن ان يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك. الله will not accept anyone to make shirk in him. That is the biggest zulm. You are coming against your Lord. What about we are coming against his verses of Quran? When it is revealed on his messenger and messenger telling it to you, ومن اظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه. He is showing us ومن اظلم who is more oppressing coming against me than those who are reminded with my verses with my warnings and they turn away as if there is doesn't mean to them anything okay never mind and he forgot what his hand had brought forward means those who did not accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's what he asked them to do and they, 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 they didn't think about it and they continue in their kufr, they continue in their ma'asi. <coughs> Here, it will give us also a meaning to Muslims that وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ You as a Muslim, you as a believer, every day you are hearing the Quran, you are hearing the message of Islam, you are going to mosques, you are sitting in circles of tafsir, why then? وَمَنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ means here وَعْزْ بِالْقُرْآنِ means guidance in Quran by Quran when you are being guided وَمَنْ ذُكِّرَ وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مَنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ you, you Muslim you are going to be so much oppressing to yourself when you are reminded with Quran and with the verses of Quran why you do not go and contemplate in it Go and meditate on it. Extract out the importance and what is behind the verses that will open 
delight of your heart will punish the darkness that is veiled your heart by reading and contemplating and either it means that reminded you of the verses or means you left behind Quran and you forgot about it you are not opening it you are not taking guidance from it you put it on the shelf of of uh, uh, in your cabinets in the mosques or in your home you are not opening it and reading and contemplating and understanding they come and remind you don't let that let let that rukul quran uh, leave it behind mahjura don't leave it left behind as if it is an empty cave you when you leave your home and empty everything abandoned don't leave it don't abandon the quran or else your heart will be abandoned if you abandon my verses i am abandoning your heart because allah said according to prophet sallallahu alaihi neither my heavens nor earth contain me but the heart of my believer <coughs> Uh, means that tajalli, that light that coming on to your heart don't let it don't make it abundant by making Quran abundant keep Quran in your heart we'll stop for uh, two minutes inshallah and we'll continue